What's up, techers, trekkers, and gadget junkies? Once again, it's me, Elric, here on Tech of Tomorrow with motherboards and my old friend, Java Bean. So what's up on the menu today? Obviously beyond my coffee. Well, we're gonna check out a really cool board from the folks over at ASRock. Now this is their X570 Tai Chi. Is it a Kung Fu killer? Let's find out. All right, so check it. This particular motherboard is kind of on the higher end side of things. And as everybody really knows, the X570 motherboards in themselves are a little bit more pricey. Now, we've seen a couple of the boards that were $199. Those are more of the entry level boards. This particular board, however, is $299, and it does offer some more features, which we'll get into as we go through the board. So first off, let's check out everything that comes inside of the box, then let's check out the board, its features, its layout, and all that good stuff, and then, then we'll see what you guys think and uh, what I think at the end of the video. So let me take a little quick sip of my coffee. All right, man, I gotta tell you, anybody out there knows, man, a good cup of coffee, can just really change things. Cause you can go from just being like, yeah, not sure. Woo, yeah, let's go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Java bean, I love that stuff. All right, so this box is pretty heavy and it's also pretty giant size. So first off, like usual, we'll take a look at the front of the box. Yada, yada. A look at the back of the box. It talks about some of the stuff. Now this particular motherboard does have a lot of gold plated contacts. The memory's gold contact. The audio's gold contact. 20 ounce copper actually on the board itself. So supposedly really high quality stuff on this particular bad boy. So let's go ahead and pop the cap here real quick. Open it up, I'll spin it around so you guys can see the inside. So there's what you get when you first open it to your greeting, glorious eyes. You get a picture of the motherboard. And it does look pretty cool. Ooh, I like that little gold thing that's in there. We'll talk about it in a minute, but that looks kind of steampunk. Hmm, interesting. All right, so let me get this out of here. Okay, little foam thing, we'll throw that at the cameraman. He ducked, coward. All right, let's take the motherboard and uh. We'll just take a quick gander at it. Nice looking, right? Let's go back to that just a second. Let me just set that out of the way. And then let's check out all of the content that comes inside of here, which will be all the goodies and all that stuff. So let me also remove this. I throw it at the camera, but he doesn't look too appreciative right now of that last throw. So I will spare him today. Or shall I? You vote. No, just kidding. You guys are a violent audience. You'd vote for me to throw stuff at the cameraman every time. You'd probably wish it was filmed and you saw me hitting him and probably drew blood and they fell on the floor. And God knows what you guys want. You guys are crazy. So, wow. Okay, a lot of stuff in here. So, uh, all right. A little Ryzen CPU thing telling me it works with the 3000, 2000 series. Okay, we know that. Uh, we'll set that out of the way. We've got a little screw for the M2. I think there's probably two on this motherboard, I believe. Maybe more, I haven't got that far yet, but we'll see when we get there. Then uh, got something in here that looks kind of tricky. It's inside of a completely shielded thing. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to talk about this now. We're seeing SLI bridge, you know, but you know, still it's gonna be working through NVLink. So it's an SLI bridge, which will be working in NVLink. And this board supports SLI and VLink. So there you go. Something different. The last two boards that we looked at, neither one of them supported that on either one of them. So that's one feature right off the bat that you know this motherboard's going to have for its hundred dollars more. I'll just set that out of the way for a second. It's kind of gingerly. Now there are I'm trying to see how many are actually inside of the bag. So I guess there's actually two in each bag. So there's a total of four of these things. So there's four SATA cables in there. Then once again, we have a, another little thing here for hooking up M2. That's actually the bracket that you're gonna screw that goes into it on top. And then um, this repetitive of the same thing here, more M2 type stuff, just a bunch of the connections for that. And actually there's a whole bunch of them, so as you can see. So um, I see three of these here, so I guess there's probably going to be three M2 connections on the board since I see three of these. Most boards have two, some have three. This is obviously going to have three. Um, ooh you get a postcard. 
So, you know, if you have a friend, like he lives in like in, in a country where he can't afford this, you can send it to him and rub it to into his face and go, ha, 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 I have the Tai Chi and you don't. Chop, chop. All right. So what else we got going on here? Okay. All of the Wi-Fi stuff is here. I believe that, that this does have the Intel Wi-Fi on board here. Um, so you get a antenna, a base, and everything. I don't know if it's going to be magnetic so it holds in there or not, but you do get, you know, an antenna and that. And uh, they actually include a tool in here. Kind of interesting. So obviously some we're going to need to use this tool, and um, when we need it, it's obviously here. We've got the CD manual. It's going to have all the drivers, all their sweet stuff. Like anybody else, ASRock's going to have their own overclocking suite. They're going to have all their own audio stuff. All of that stuff's going to be on here. When we actually do the final review and do the testing, we'll show all that stuff and how it works. For now, we're just showing you guys the motherboard and what comes in the box. So there's that. Then we've got, obviously, the manual. Tells you what was going on in the motherboard. And then we've got a software setup guide. So. All of those software suite things we were just talking about a minute ago, well, check it out. They'll be inside of here telling you what they do and how to run them. That's what comes in the box. Now let's check out the board. Right off the bat, I have to say that I really like the design of this motherboard. I mean, it just looks amazing. Um, usually the ASUS Armor series of motherboards, they like have a cover that's on there like this. This is just amazing. It's covering up everything. And um, we'll get to that in just a minute, what exactly this whole cover does, but it's actually removable. Now, another thing really cool about this particular motherboard is check this out. This motherboard has a backplate. That's right, a very nice backplate. So you're not cutting your hands up or anything when you're holding onto the motherboard. So that is pretty cool stuff. So. Obviously, you guys know that the X570 chipset supports, you know, Ryzen 2000, Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, and depending on which series of CPUs determines how some of the features on the board react. Now, plenty of room around the CPU area for putting on aftermark coolers, liquid coolers, Noctua coolers, Noctua, excuse me, any of those big stuff, you got lots of room. and. You're gonna notice something really interesting before we even get to the IOs. This thing's completely shielded off as well. Completely shielded off. And just look at the cool design. And even down here at the bottom, where the 570 chipset is being cooled off, it just looks really cool. That copper thing, I don't know. This thing to me just kind of screams like, let's do a steampunk build, you know what I mean? It just really, really does. Now, the first of the power connectors is located up on the top, just like most motherboards. We're gonna have an eight pin, four pin. Now, on the very top, we're going to see CPU fans. Um, in total on this motherboard, there are quite a few different connectors on here. There's also different connectors that are dedicated for Evan and AIO, but all of the connectors on here can either double as system fans or they can double as your pump fan. So you can use any one you want on the board. Now, we're gonna move around the side over here. You're gonna see the memory right here, 24 pin power connector, dual channel DDR. If you're using a pro CPU, you can use ECC memory. Now, if you're using a Ryzen 3000 CPU, one of the new CPUs, 4666 on the overclock. Amazing stuff. 2133 on the entry level memory. And as far as the entry level goes, it's the same whether you're using the 2000 or 3000. The only difference is the overclock. So 4666 with the new CPUs. With the older CPUs, you're going to get 36. So that's really the differences between the two. Um, let's see. So going along here, we're going to see a uh, USB, uh, this is a USB 3 header. Then we're going to see the Type C header that's located right here. Once again, system chassis fans. We're going to see a couple more connections here. We're also going to see these little white connectors. The white connectors, those are all for hooking up your lighting for system lighting. So if your system has aura or whatever type of lighting you're using, it doesn't matter. You'll be able to hook that up and run it through the software and all of that stuff. Now, continuing down some features that are kind of different. If you're using, like I said, a Ryzen 3000 CPU, all of the PCIe's are all gonna be 4.0, they're all gonna be the latest, greatest technology. However, 
If you're using a 2000 series CPU, then it becomes PCIe 16X, PCIe 4X, and then all of the other connections, except for the bottom one right here, will be PCIe. They'll be 4.0, but they'll be only at 1X. So if I flip the board to the side, eight SATA six gigabyte connectors right here, eight of them. So these were all the kind that I particularly like better because they're angled to the side. So when you're putting your case inside your motherboard and everything, when you're putting your motherboard inside your case, you hook all these wires up and you spin them around. It does great for doing cable management. So for the audio, we have the Realtek. It's the ALC 1220 7.1 audio. Has really good though capacitors, nice Nichicon capacitors. And um, it is totally segregated. You really cannot see it. And why we're down here, this plate right here is completely removable. That's right. That's what the included tool. So you guys can see the included tool allows you to completely remove this plate. And underneath there, this is where you see the M2 connectors. Now the same thing goes once again. If you're using a Ryzen 3000 CPU, then everything's gonna be M2, four, and that's it. And if you're using the 2000 series, it's gonna be M2 version 3.0. Now finally, taking a look at the very bottom of the board, there's a COM port. There's also a Thunderbolt port. So check that out, native Thunderbolt on AMD. Hmm, this should be interesting because there's a lot of products now from many audio manufacturers out there that rely on a Thunderbolt connection. And if AMD can actually have this working natively, that will be something awesome. And I'll be definitely testing that and making sure that it does actually work correctly because that's something very important to me as a musician. So we have another, you know, a uh, little connector down here at the bottom. This is for connecting more of those system lights. So if you want to do that, you can do that. We also have a couple more COM ports. We have all the system connectors right here. Now, for some people who like to put their boards on a test station and they're not really using it inside of a case, they're just doing liquid overclocking and that kind of stuff, these particular controls and the debug becomes very important because the debug lets you know what's going on. You can also set the motherboard up though so that it's set at its lowest setting so it tries not to shut off when you're doing that crazy stuff. And then last but not least, there's this little button all the way over to this side and that is for the clear CMOS. So that pretty much explains everything about the motherboard itself as a layout. Let's take a look now finally at the rear I.O. And I have to tell you, this I.O. is nice. I mean, really, just look at it. It's completely covered. It's black. It's awesome. You have to admit, it really looks nice. Now, at the very left-hand side or at the top when it's installed inside your computer, this is your BIOS flashback. So if you're doing a bunch of crazy overclocking and all of a sudden your BIOS won't boot up, you can use this tool to go to a different BIOS and be up and going again so your system isn't down. Next up, we have two Intel LAN ports. These are your wireless ports, USB 3.0 ports, there's a PS2 connection, so if you have an old school mouse, that's gonna work. You have Realtek LAN. You also have a clear CMOS button. This is a really tiny button. You can barely see it. It's located next to the HDMI. Now, one thing strange is that there's no display port out on this whatsoever. So if you're gonna be using an AMD APU and you were saying, hey, I'd really like to have display port, well, guess what? You're gonna to have to use an adapter because this board only has HDMI. There's a single RJ45 connector. This is brought to you from the Realtek LAN. And then next to that, we see the USB Type-C, and then above that, the USB 3.2 connection. And then last but not least, we see the 7.1 audio connections, including a SPDIF connection for digital audio. And all of these have, guess what? All of these have a gold-plated connection for the best connectivity for your audio. So at the end of the day, my very first opinion of this board is, well, it looks really nice. I mean, I have to say that this board just looks really, really cool. Um, I think that for those people who have APUs and might possibly have a display port, they might be a little bummed out that they don't have that particular connection on the rear I.O., but still, the rear I.O. is pretty fleshed out, and I mean, you guys saw it. It just looks really cool. Plus, 
You can do SLI on this particular motherboard. The other ones that we looked at, the $199 price range, they only supported the AMD GPUs. So you really couldn't do anything that had to do with two cards whatsoever unless you were doing on the AMD side of things. So if you're a person who really was like, hey, I'd like to have a 3900X CPU, but I've already got a pair of NVIDIA cards that I run in SLI. Well, you can use them on this board and do your upgrade. So has all the good lighting effects, software stuff, and all that stuff. There even comes with a manual to do the software. So you know there's quite a bit of different stuff in there. So I think at the end of the day that being priced at $299, that the pros definitely outweigh the cons. I'm Elric, you've been watching Tech and Tomorrow. If you wanna get more information about this motherboard or purchase one for yourself, we will have a link down below where you can do so for yourself. So I'm Elric, thank you guys for watching Tech and Tomorrow. If you like what you see, hey, hit that sub button. If you dig the music, we have a link down below to where you can check out that as well. Peace.